Hello. Uh, it's a very long time that I haven't recorded any video. And obviously you can guess why. It's that I am also a bit overtaken by all these news about coronavirus and worried for humankind. What is going to happen? Oh, but as soon as you just, you are not in a city and you are in nature, and you see the sun, it's the same. Things which have changed are, just realize, these are the things which if we didn't have media, if we didn't have internet, we would not even learn about it. People, especially in villages, in remote villages, would not just continue to live their lives. So I am not saying that it's a conspiracy and that they, the media is fooling us with the number of deaths, because I have direct proof from people in uh, areas where th there is most coronavirus that it's real that there are dead bodies put on in cities put on the streets because it's just too much but what i am saying that politicians uh, globalization leaders systems had disappointed us had betrayed us but there is one energy which never betrays us and this is nature and the sun these are we still have green grass we still have sunshine we still have forests with birds singing in them so please don't lose hope it's not the end of the world we still have a lot of beautiful and positive things on this planet but I feel very sorry for people who are entangled in the samsara of a city life who even if they want it they cannot leave because they have responsibility to their children, parents, family, jobs uh, mortgages and, and they just cannot get out so the happy ones are those who who did one step before and got out from this system which was which was evident that it it cannot work a globalization a unification a oneness idea it is sick because this humanity survived on the base of small local groups which adjusted to the local conditions Europeans to the European conditions and weather and plants and animals and farming uh, Indians to Indian plants Indian agriculture which is very different the seasons are very different so the human beings are also different in a way that they belong to their local area where they grew up so this pandemic is showing us that we belong to the land we are here to till the land and to live uh, the land is still vast there is still possible to put a grain to the soil and it will I saw in my eyes, it's still growing. So we are not the end of the world apocalypse when we would starve to death. But the problem is that we are entangled. Entangled in relationships and responsibilities to governments. And then many of us cannot get out from that. And. Uh, I got out from that without my own will. I always wanted to be part of this game, but 
somehow my fate was so tragic always. I had such a difficult life. This globalized system never wanted me. Always spit me out, spat me out. And uh, I have survived my death repeatedly. And I know that I can survive without basic needs because I survived many times without basic needs. And also the three months when Bom John chained me and tortured me, I tell you, I really, that was my quarantine. And so I am shocked that people should just restrict themselves for a very little time. But if everyone did this, sit on their, in their flats, sit in their farmlands, work in their gardens and not go and socialize now. Oh, it's so easy. Uh, there are people who are forced to be in quarantine. In, in innocent people who are jailed. Like I was chained to that tree for three months. Do you think I could just tell Bom John, oh, but I want to watch TV. I want to go to, uh, uh, to ski in the Alps. To give you some hope that nature is the solution. And uh, even it boasts immunity, there had been, there had been serious scientific um, researches that when you stay in a forest, your immunity is getting higher. Japanese scientists made this research. Because you get the energy from the forest, you get the energy from the earth, the grass, the fresh air. And if anyone is still able to leave the city, but at this point no one can leave. I am so sorry for for people who who are entangled. I would like to tell you that this life. I have a guru who is not in his body anymore. Apart from my, my guru, I had a yoga teacher from my 16th year and. My yoga teacher was telling me, we don't come to this life to enjoy. It's a mistake to think. Uh, we just enjoy, we just eat up the fruits of our karma. It's not like that. We come to this earth, to this earth, to learn. To learn and to cope and to learn to endure. And uh, I live my life with this philosophy, he told me. Uh, and it, it is this situation when we have to learn where did we as humanity and as individuals make the mistakes. And just a little sacrifice and we will manage this pandemic. Because uh, this is not a natural pandemic. And I would like to tell something very interesting connected to this pandemic. That Bom John is in possession of some device, some power. I have many sources um, proving me the same. And also, sometimes in 2006, I will show it in this video, there was an interview with Jas Bahadur Vaiba Bom John's VIP, ex-mafia leader, follower, now an old man. And the interviewer asked him, who is Bom John? Who will be? Is he Buddha? And this guy, Jas Bahadur Vaiba, told him, he will be the Maitreya. I can tell you because he is able to destroy and create. And I was always thinking about this. I know Vaiba. I lived in his house. He is fanatically believing that Bom John is God, the only God. Because Buddhists are not supposed to believe in God, but Bom John turned it upside down and ha then he suddenly created a new type of Buddhism which is not Buddhism anymore because it is 
rejecting Gautama Buddha, but he uses the terminology of Buddhism because he wants to overtake the Tamang nations who are originally Buddhists. And Bonjon um, was claiming that he is Maitreya. So he is God. Maitreya is not supposed to be God. Maitreya is a form of future Buddha, another Buddha whom Gautama Buddha had predicted to come. But Bonjon used this, pick, up, pick out this word Maitreya and told Maitreya is a God. And this is the same principle, principle like you tell to a Muslim that Muhammad is Allah. That would be blasphemy because Muhammad never told I am Allah. Yes, this, I am not Muslim, but this is the, the, my basic knowledge of Muslim religion, Islam, is that Muhammad is the prophet of Allah. This is the easiest to, for me to explain how absurd is what Bonjon is saying. Because he's in a way saying that he is the prophet of God. On the other side, he's saying that he is that God of whom he is the prophet. <laughs> so, Bonjon is supposed to be the Maitreya who will overtake this world soon. And he told not only that he, he can, the proof is that he can create, but he can destroy. Now, destroying work of Bonjon we have seen quite a bit already. Uh, there is a wind blowing, so I hope that it will be heard. So we have seen Bonjon able to destroy human bodies, killing people, torturing people like me, raping young girls, destroying their whole life, breaking people's hands. Yeah, but I have never seen and never heard about anything which would slightly remind me of Bonjon being able to create anything. has a power which would render all the weapons of the world useless. And I am thinking all over these eight remaining years after my torture in 2012, what is this? Why is he writing about this? Why is Vaiba telling? Oh, and Vaiba told that He's not supposed to, to tell the details because he had vowed that he will not disclose it, that it will be clear in the future. So what I can tell you, Bonjon has a detailed plan for everything he's doing. He's a psychopath, a spiritual psychopath. So psychopaths have nothing else to do. Bonjon doesn't go to the farm, to the factory, to the office. He has nothing else to do than plan how to kill people, how to kidnap this and that person, when. He has a schedule. And he has a plan. He has long, many years ago, he started to plan how, when, by which means, by which people to overtake the world, how to get into politics in Nepal, what happened. I have predicted that he will get into politics. I mean, he will have influence on politicians. He's always in the background. Because Nepalese are not stupid, they would openly protest if they learned that behind the Prime Minister uh, Sushil Koirala, behind Sher Bahadur Deoba, and behind Pushpa Kamal Dahal's decisions, there is some killer cult leader Bomjon, Nepalis would protest, but most of them don't know. And most of them don't believe when they hear and read about it. And most of them just wave it, ah, these politicians are corrupt anyway, so if they meet Bomjon or another mafia leader, doesn't make a big difference. 
Yeah, it makes. Because Bom John is not only a criminal. Bom John is a religious, pseudo-religious leader who is openly planning, he told it to Sushil Koirala, he's openly planning to go to the world and to spread his Maitri Dharma. This is just a name. It has nothing to do with Maitri and nothing to do with Dharma. Maitri Dharma is a, a forceful unification of all religions, all political regimes, all countries into one. This coronavirus pandemic can become Bom John's first step to weaken uh, humanity. Manabisma, Tulu, Uri, Isaac, 